Find out why more people trust WISN 12 News this morning. Watch weekdays 4.30 to 7 a.m. Right now, this is Big 12 Sports Saturday. Presented by George Webb Restaurants. Our kitchen's always cooking. Good evening and welcome to Big 12 Sports Saturday. I'm Dario Melendez, joined tonight by Drew Olson. Another jam-packed show for you. Talking NASCAR with Jared Fialco, breaking down the latest Bucks offseason moves, plus a couple of free agent wide receivers that are being linked to the Packers. But we begin with Brett Favre. Remember that guy? Well, number four, finally weighing in on the Devontae Adams departure from Titletown. I do think that um, Devontae... Uh, owes a great deal of gratitude to, to Aaron and, and the Packers drafting him. That's not to say he's not a great player because he is a tremendous player. And, uh, and and we'll see that with, I almost said Oakland, with Las Vegas. Uh, but it's just hard to, to shift gears, for, especially from a player as prolific as Aaron Rodgers. I, I'd be shocked if he had the same year he's, he's had in previous years. That's not to say he can't do it, but I, I would be shocked. Don't worry, Brett. I also say Oakland a lot as well. But, Drew, I mean, look, Brett Favre was getting crushed on Twitter. A lot of people really not just listening to the entire interview thinking that Favre is just ripping on Adams. But I think he has a valid point. I mean, when you look at the guy that was thrown to him in Green Bay compared to the weapons that they have in Las Vegas and the guy thrown to him in Las Vegas, I mean, do you think that his production is going to drop down a little bit next season? I don't see how it can. Dario, it's the age-old question. Do receivers make quarterbacks or do quarterbacks make receivers? I'm in the camp. Quarterbacks make receivers. Oh, sure. They can make mediocre receivers look like all pros. They can make all pros look otherworldly the way Devontae Adams has for so many years. And it's not really that big a slam on Derek Carr to say that his production will back off. Obviously, he's going to be the focal point of every team facing the uh, Raiders, just as Devontae was in Green Bay. But it will be different with a different guy throwing him the ball. Yeah, look, it's the rule of 12. 12 makes B receivers, A receivers. He makes A receivers, Hall of Fame receivers. And that's what they did with Devontae Adams. Drew, I can't think of many former Packer wide receivers that went on and had any real success. The only guy I can kind of to think of is Randall Cobb, but he obviously came back and hasn't been the same guy. But when you look at Las Vegas, you already have Hunter Renfro. You have Darren Waller, who had 665 yards, two TDs from that tight end position. Renfro having over 1,000 yards and nine TDs. You also have Drake and Jacobs out of the backfield. I mean, you have so many weapons, and there are some throws that Rodgers can make through that Carr can't. So it seems like, in my opinion, that the Las Vegas Raider offense is tailored more to finding the open guy rather than forcing it to Devontae Adams. But look, with the loss of Adams, there is some depth concern. The Packers may be looking at another wide receiver to the mix, a veteran wide on CBS Sports came out with a list of the top remaining wide receiver free agents that would be a good fit for a few teams, obviously at the top. Julio Jones and Odell Beckham. The article had both the wide receivers linked to the Packers, among other teams. But let's just start with OBJ. Do you think he'd be a good fit in Green Bay? He was a good fit when he helped win a Super Bowl, right? He gave a, a little pop. I, that's a tough one, Dario, because can he be healthy? Can he be productive? Is he a good chemistry fit? That's a big thing up in Green Bay. Uh, they, they love to get, have guys that are you know, not distractions and good chemistry, good locker room guys. Not saying that OBJ isn't, but he draws a lot of attention wherever he goes. So that's a thought. And what is his, what is his productive? What's his ceiling in terms of his health and his age? Yeah, that's going to be the biggest question. You don't know when you're going to get him back from that ACL tear. Hasn't had a double-digit touchdown season since 2017. Hasn't had a 1,000-yard receiving year since 2018. But I will say this, I was fortunate enough to cover him in New York, he is a locker room favorite. I understand that his antics outside of the locker room may not seem like he's a good locker room guy, but everybody on that team loved him. Now, another guy that's always been pretty popular in the locker room, Julio Jones. Obviously, there's been some links with the Colts because that's where Matt Ryan is currently, but do you see Julio Jones being a good fit in Green Bay, Drew? There's another guy. I'm not sure if there are many miles left on the tires. He's put in a lot of good years in Atlanta, Dario, but is he capable of coming in to be the what the Packers need, which is that kind of veteran number one guy? Fans love guys that they used to have on their fantasy team. And the, the <laughs> idea of adding these names, and they're, I know they're, they're accomplished players, they're not just names, but they're big names. 
And if you look at the stats, and if Amari Rodgers can have the same production that a Julio Jones would, people would still rather have Julio Jones in a Packers uniform just because of the sizzle that he brings. So I get that. The Packers aren't swayed by names. They're swayed by production. They're going to bring guys in if they think they can help. Yeah, and help. Last two seasons, just 19 combined games last year. The Titans played 10 games, had just one touchdown. Now, granted, you have Ryan Tannehill throwing to him, but... I still think there is some value, even if it's just getting the young receivers on the same page. This is a veteran that's been around, has seen it all, and he still probably has some production, especially in the end zone or I said red zone area. So, look, I mean, I think both these guys could add something to a wide receiver room where right now Alan Lazard is your number one. Let's throw Gronkowski's name in there just, you know, I'll for grins. I will take <laughs> Rob Gronkowski all day, every day. Unretired, Gronk. <laughs> Love it. In other Packers news, Packers president, Mark Murphy announcing that he will retire after the 2024 year. Now, this is a bylaw within the Packers that when you hit the age of 70, you have to retire from that president CEO uh, post that you've been holding. Drew, what's his legacy after he retires? Well, it's interesting because in that role, he's kind of the public face. The Packers don't have an owner, so the president kind of takes that, that role. You can say, okay, he presided over an era when they were very successful. You could say that they, they won a Super Bowl in 2010. But I think his legacy is actually title town and the, the advancements that they made yeah. in terms of the business. That's what he's graded on, right? And I yeah. think he was hugely successful in that regard. You go there now. If you haven't been to Lambeau Field in 10 or 15 years, you'd be stunned at what the, the title town district looks like. And a lot of that was Mark Murphy, Murphy pushing those buttons. Look, a Super Bowl, nine division titles. And as you said, he just grew that title town era. Had two stock sales to make the stadium even better. So look, Mark Murphy, for all of his fault if you want to call it kind of botching the Brett Favre uh, trade and the transition to Aaron Rodgers and maybe Devontae Adams as well and the hard feelings with Aaron Rodgers at some point I mean Mark Murphy has done a lot for this fan base and a lot for the city of Green Bay because Drew we all tend to forget we think Green Bay is this big market here but nationally it's still viewed as a very small niche market but when you go up there it feels so much bigger because of the footprint that he's been able to establish. Absolutely Dario and if you look at the Bears now they're talking about moving their stadium from that monstrosity soldier field they want to put a roof on it or move to Arlington Heights if they move to Arlington Heights I guarantee you they're going to try to have a title town district they're going to have a district oh. around it where they control things and, and try to own things and increase the revenue stream so in that way Mark Murphy's provided yeah. a model for other franchises. Yeah, the blueprint. And look, it's a great blueprint. If you've been up to Titletown, the surrounding areas with the new hotels and the experiences, it's really been first class. And Mark Murphy has a lot to do with that. Still much more to head here on our Big 12 Sports Saturday. I go one-on-one -on -one with Cheesehead TV's Aaron Nagler offering his expertise opinion on Murphy's retirement and Devontae Adams. If that production will be falling off. You heard what Drew and I had to say. Find out what he has to say next on Big 12 Sports Saturday. You're watching Big 12 Sports Saturday, presented by George Webb Restaurants. Our kitchen's always cooking. WISN 12 News this morning with morning meteorologist Lindsay Slater. You need to turn it on in the morning to check out the weather at Lindsay Slater. The one you turn to every morning. Lindsay on the weather. I can't live without it. Preparing you and putting a smile on your face. I dress my kid every day based on what Lindsay says. <laughs> She's personable, relatable. I trust Lindsay Slater because that's how I plan my week. Watch WISN 12 News this morning, weekdays, 4.30 to 7 a.m. We're celebrating 50 years of Popeye's signature chicken with a deal you'll love. Now for just $6.99, takes 50 years of crunchy, juicy chicken we've been serving since 1972. Get the five-piece while you can for just $6.99. To conquer the high road or the off road. The GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Premium and capable. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on Sierra Heavy Duty models. GMC. We are professional grade. As law enforcement officers, we've seen a lot. Enough to know attacks on Governor Evers are badly exaggerated. The truth? It was the Walker Clayfish administration that cut nearly $100 million from funds that had been used for police and first responders. That's a fact. And on their watch, Wisconsin's violent crime rate went up 25%. They talk a big game, but the record tells a very different story. And that's the truth. 
Governor Evers is doing the right thing for Wisconsin. Hey, baseball fans. This season, turn the Weds double play meal deal. Seven cheeseburgers and two fries for only $15. Mm -mm. Injured? Get the help you need. Just dial sevens. Welcome back to Big 12 Sports Saturday. You already heard what Drew and I had to say about Devontae Adams and his production and Mark Murphy's legacy. But now let's hear from Cheesehead TV's Aaron Negler. Okay, Aaron, let's dive right into it. Mark Murphy announces his retirement after the 2024 season. By bylaws, that president and CEO has to do that. He'll turn 70. So what is his legacy? Because I know he's got nine division titles. He has a Super Bowl, helped with that transition from Rodgers to Favre. So what do you think that legacy is going to be? It's interesting because I know in the moment when he is present publicly and speaking and people kind of instantly react to whatever soundbite comes out of his press conference, it feels like, and this is just anecdotal, but it does feel like Packers fans and, and observers really don't appreciate the job he's done with his stewardship of the Packers. As you mentioned, presided over a Super Bowl victory. There's no doubt that most people probably attribute that uh, to Harlan and all the people who came before. He did oversee a couple messy moments with the franchise quarterbacks, and those are the things that probably get the most attention and people know him the best for. But what doesn't get talked about is the viability of the Packers as a franchise. Long-term is lo large part due to Mark Murphy. Anyone who's cheering for the Packers growing up with all of this success, knowing that they are very much set up for another couple decades in a league where things just get bigger and bigger the money grows and tiny little green bay is still able to compete largely thanks to mark murphy yeah it's always about the big picture of that position and i think people tend to forget about that and look you mentioned some of the sloppy transitions some of the muckiness they had to deal with right might have happened over this last summer with Devontae Adams wanting to be traded he was traded to the Oakland Raiders Brett Favre the former Packer weighing in on it and it's kind of a mixed bag of what you have to really believe on Twitter to what he actually said <laughs> right <laughs> Brett Favre kind of saying that he just thinks Devontae Adams production going to go down in Las Vegas what do you think about that I completely agree and that's the funny part when you talk about the perception of the headline right on Twitter or where have you it's always blown up and made into something it isn't. I actually, if you listen to what he said, he pretty much just said, you know, Devontae's production is going to dip a bit because Carr's not going to throw the balls to him that Aaron Rodgers did. And I don't think that's outlandish. I don't think that's crazy. And it certainly isn't a knock on Adams or his talent or his greatness or what he accomplished in Green Bay. But let's face it, when it's third and one and there's a check down available by the design of the offense, more often than not, most quarterbacks are going to do that. Whereas with Aaron, a lot of times he went to Devontae, you know, regardless of what was open elsewhere. That's no knock on Aaron. That was just their connection. And I think all Brett was saying was, look, there are a lot of opportunities that came Devontae's way that probably aren't going to be coming his way in Las Vegas. It, that doesn't change the greatness of the player that Devontae Adams is. Now, let's just pretend that Favre was knocking Devontae. You know, Devontae's going to stink. Right. right. There have been many wide receivers that have left 12 that have gone on to have successful careers. To be honest, I really can't think of any. Maybe Randall Cobb has had the most success leaving, but then he comes back. Do you think right. he's going to be successful without Rodgers? I do. I think there's no doubt he's at the height of his powers at the moment. He's in an offense with a lot of kind of moving parts, a lot of talent that is going to mean teams can't probably... And we saw the Baltimore Ravens just last year uh, on certain third downs literally triple team him, which never happens in the NFL. I think that will be, you know, people will still obviously be rolling coverage to him, but he'll get more opportunity simply because that offense really multiple. He'll get more one on one opportunities. And I think Carl take that shot. I, I don't doubt for a moment that his production will dip a little bit, but he's still going to be a great player. I'm going to have to start rocking that beard a little bit more, see if I get approval from the missus. Uh, look, still so much more to come here on Big 12 Sports Saturday. I hit the wall. I hit the wall pretty hard. And in doing so, I avoid the wreck, which is to my right, but I also take down a Sargento sign. Barely escaping a massive wreck, Wisconsin NASCAR driver Josh Balicki had a memorable moment at Road America this past weekend. Jared Fiacco goes one-on-one -on -one with the Menominee Falls native next.
I still think I can sell the car myself. This is going to take all day. And I have big plans. Brunch. Bubble bath. At WeBuyAnyCar.com, selling your vehicle is always fast and fair. And a nice pedicure. All done. Don't trade in or sell by yourself. Go to WeBuyAnyCar.com now for a free online valuation. Get in, get out, get paid. Some numbers are thrilling. Some impressive. Some just right. After an accident, there's one critical number. The number that helps you get your life back by factoring in your needs for today and tomorrow. That's where Habish Habish and Rotier's numbers really add up. With over 90 years of client successes and 13 offices to help you wherever you are. No other personal injury law firm is better suited to get the amount that's right for you. After a long night of bringing home the bacon, there's nothing wrong with a nice, smoky nightcap. After all, it's 5 a.m. somewhere. Hormel Black Label Bacon. Make it. Just three words tell you everything you need to know. They tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach and why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans. Not everyone can say that, but we can. Made in America. Visit your steel dealer to find these Made in America trimmers. Real steel. Find yours. Buffalo, Uvalde, and even Milwaukee. Some 17 people were injured in Milwaukee last night after a mass shooting. But after the Aurora shooting, Ron Johnson said, This really is not an issue of guns. Johnson blocked common sense gun safety, like criminal background checks, to keep guns away from the dangerously mentally ill. Johnson even opposed funding for training in community policing to keep us safe. Senator Johnson, it's time to help police tackle gun violence and crime. I'm Rebecca Clayfish, and I've put more than 200,000 miles on this old minivan. Thankfully, most of them came before Joe Biden and Tony Evers jacked up our gas prices. As your governor, I'll fight to cut taxes and stop liberal spending to lower costs for everyone. Tim Michaels pushed for years to raise our gas tax while getting rich from massive government contracts. Tim Michaels is out for himself. I'm Rebecca Clayfish, and I'm on your side. Welcome back to Big 12 Sports Saturday. After nearly escaping a wreck during last week's NASCAR race at Elkhart Lake, a driver from Nominee Falls has become a viral sensation. Jared Fialco goes one-on-one -on -one with Josh Bielke. There. Oh, contact again. Noah Gragson gets loose, bumps Sage Karam, goes sideways in the middle of the track, and like a teetering house of cards, everything falls apart. What did it look like from your vantage point? So I come out of turn three onto the straightaway, and there's a little bit of dust, but not much, so it's not alarming. All of a sudden, the dust returns right underneath this Argento Bridge. That's the one spot on the track where there's no spotters. So you're blind, and you're driving into a cloud of dust, and all of a sudden, I see a car go sideways. I see a car kind of get airborne, and I get on the brakes even harder. But at that point, the car behind me can't slow down quick enough. He hits me. I hit the wall. I hit the wall pretty hard. And in doing so, I avoid the wreck which is to my right, but I also take down a Sargento sign. As I hit it, I actually thought it was the hood crumbling. So I'm like, yeah, I think our hood is destroyed. I think the front of our car is destroyed. And then I realized, well, the hood of my car is actually there. It's just one of those signs. And we see Josh Balicki taking the Sargento billboard with him. Your job is to compete, run a solid race, and a wreck like that can ruin your day, but you have really seemed to take the humor of the situation in stride. We had uh, such an up and down day. I mean, we literally clawed our way into the top 10 by the end of stage one, and then we had a flat tire. We had a pit. We went all the way to dead last. We restarted that last restart with two laps ago, I think in like 18th or 19th, and worked our way to 13th. So looking back at the day, um, it was a pretty successful day for us and when i got out of the car and i saw all the memes with us our gentle sign my mom thought that was an actual quote that i said so <laughs> my mom probably hasn't watched talladega nights as many times as i have so she shared that on her page thinking that i actually said that this sticker is dangerous and inconvenient but i do love 
When did the realization sink in that that moment had gone viral? When I got out of the car and my sisters, I think, were there and they, they told me, they're like, you got to check out this video. Like, it's all over social media. And I didn't really get on my phone until I got back to our Airbnb in Elkhart Lake and I started pulling it up and I had hundreds of notifications. And later that night, Sargento changed their profile picture or their background picture on Facebook and Twitter to that. I don't know if that's what Sargento had in mind, but... Good coverage. I think it was worth it at the end of the day. NASCAR's two-year contract with Road America is now up. How disappointing would it be if a future agreement couldn't be reached? There's talks of doing that Chicago street race, and you don't get to come back to what is essentially your home state track. Yeah, so listen, I think the Chicago street race is important. I think it would be a success, and I think it's going to happen. But I don't like to see that at the expense of losing Road America. You know, I think there's other tracks that we go to, circle tracks that we could lose a date. You know, we go to twice, you know, Kansas, Richmond, tracks we go to twice. You know, let's take away one of those dates because all of the Wisconsin fans are so passionate about motorsports. You know, Road America is one of the most well-attended races, in my opinion, of the season. So to lose a Road America NASCAR race date, I think that would be pretty devastating. Hopefully NASCAR will listen to the teams, the drivers, and the fans, and we'll be back there next year. Hopefully 4th of July weekend because that's a special weekend. Jared, thanks so much. And Drew, we were talking about it. It would be a shame if NASCAR left because with Indy leaving, remember, they tried the Milwaukee 225, the Milwaukee Mile. They tried Indy Fest, just wasn't working out. But the NASCAR swoops in, kind of takes over the 4th of July weekend, putting their stamp down, putting their flag down. And it has been a huge success. It would be a shame if they left. I agree, Dario. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when the U.S. Bank Championship, the golf tournament, a tour <laughs> stop. We didn't really attract all the big names, but it was great having a yearly tour stop. And now we're used to majors and we're spoiled, but I still miss that. Just like I miss the racing of the racers coming from Indianapolis right to the Milwaukee Mile the next week. That was great. Everybody goes to Milwaukee after Indy. This, they've really carved out a niche for themselves on this July 4th thing. I think it's worked. The, the drivers love it. We heard people say they love the custard, the brats, the cheese, obviously, Sargento. With yeah, the, right? With the, with Could that. Sargento have gotten any luckier? Oh. I mean, you want to talk about free publicity. We make fun of the Ricky Bobby thing, but imagine if you were allowed to put uh, a sticker on your windshield, how much that would cost. That's, that's got to be $200,000 worth of advertising I expect right there. to see you with a snowplow like that this year. <laughs> you're clear, clear in the driveway. I, I'm going to get Sargento just tattooed on my forehead, so we'll yeah. see how that goes. <laughs> so much more to come here on uh, Big 12 Sports Saturday. Bucks bring back a veteran big man they acquired midseason last year, but did they need to do that? Drew and I discussed the return of Surge. You're watching Big 12 Sports Saturday. Hurt in a car? Call GLR. Just dial sevens. The future is for everyone. So this 4th of July, be ready in a new Ford vehicle. Choose from a Ford F-150 truck, an SUV like Ford Explorer, or a Ford Bronco Sport. Get out there and celebrate your freedom. And do it all in a new Ford vehicle, because the future is for everyone. So be ready this 4th of July with Ford. New inventory is arriving daily, so visit your local Ford dealer or shop online at buyfordnow.com. Buffalo, Uvalde, and even Milwaukee. Some 17 people were injured in Milwaukee last night after a mass shooting. But after the Aurora shooting, Ron Johnson said, This really is not an issue of guns. Johnson blocked common sense gun safety, like criminal background checks, to keep guns away from the dangerously mentally ill. Johnson even opposed funding for training and community policing to keep us safe. Senator Johnson, it's time to help police tackle gun violence and crime. Hypnotize your way to savings. Breathing techniques to help you save. Looking to make saving a habit? Yeah, what's the secret? No secret. Just open a savings account at BMO and we'll give you a cash reward for every month you save. A cash reward? Just for saving. Mm hmm And when you open a checking account, we'll give you a $300 bonus to get your new savings habit started. Love that. What's your book? How to get a $300 bonus and a monthly cash reward for saving with BMO. He literally wrote the book on saving. Has me on the cover. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. It's your journey. Own it in the Hyundai Tucson. Now get 2.99% APR for 48 months on the Tucson with new inventory arriving daily. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Hi, I'm Scott Walker. Please join me in voting for Rebecca Clayfish for governor. Rebecca stood with me as we took on the big government special interest and in cut taxes. 
where Rebecca and I were fighting for reform, Tim Michaels' company was teaming up with the union bosses and those lobbying for a gas tax increase. Rebecca and I knew that these increases would hurt Wisconsin families, so we stopped them. There's only one conservative fighter in the race for governor. Her name is Rebecca Clayfish. Four more years of Bombi Portis, the Bucks officially re-signing the forward to a four-year contract this week, making it official by tweeting out the picture of Bobby visiting the White House during their visit last year in D.C. The Bucks also re-signing officially Wes Matthews and Javon Carter, as well as bringing back Serge Ibaka, who they acquired from the Clippers in February as part of a four-team trade. And look, he didn't do much as a buck last year. You see his numbers, played just 19 games, mostly in garbage minutes, averaging seven points, a little over five rebounds, and just under a half a block per game. Those way down from his career averages of 12, 7, and 2. So Drew, obviously, insurance policy for Brooke Lopez, who's a year older, underwent back surgery last year and in the final year of his contract. But is it smart to use a roster spot on an insurance policy? Well, Dario, at the, in the playoffs last year, I was kind of screaming, like, where's Ibaka? Why isn't he yeah. playing more for defense? I thought we'd see more of him, and maybe they want to... The Bucks are just running it back, let's just say. They're, they're running it back. They're bringing back the same squad because they, they're confident that this squad got cut short because of Middleton's injury, and they, they went through a lot during the year, a lot of adversity. Serge Ibaka's the kind of guy that you can always trade that contract. There'll always be a team that is willing to take him. So it's not that big an insurance uh, policy. It's just... To me, it's philosophically, when you get to the back end of that bench, the last four or five guys do you want them to be veteran guys that are plug yeah. and play that can help you in a jam or do you want them to be developmental guys the Bucks have done a good job of kind of balancing those things like Jordan War getting minutes and stuff like they try to keep the pipeline of talent coming but it's tough and you do need veteran guys but it's a tough balancing act and we saw last year with Bobby Portis missing time Giannis missing time Brooke Lopez missing time they got real thin at that big man position so having a guy a veteran like Serge Ibaka always a good thing and he could shoot the three ball pretty well as well so look I I understand that there's a lot of talk out there that this is a wasted roster spot, but my question is, like, who else would you sign there? I mean, you're already set at the guard position. You're set at the point guard position. You're set at forward. Now you just kind of secure that right now. We'll see if they can make any other moves. Uh, there's a pipe dream, Drew, that KD. There's a pipe dream for a package <laughs> with Middleton and Grayson and Bochamp and some picks for uh, Kevin Durant. I don't see that happening, but look, I don't think this is a bad thing. He was pretty much a fan favorite, and he was a clubhouse favorite when he was with the team, so I don't see this hurting them much at all. Yeah, this is, a, again, one of those things. Philosophically, where, where do you want to go, and how do you yeah. use those spots? And maybe Serge Ibaka would have had, would have if he had more minutes, he might have been more effective. We'll never know. We can't yeah. get last season back. But you're right. With Lopez, and you, you, you want to baby him, the Bucks are not about winning games anymore in December and January. Correct. It's about later. So we'll see how if he's even on the team later in the season. Yeah. We'll see. Who knows? Well, that's going to do it for this edition of our Big 12 Sports Saturday, but we will be seeing you next week. Same time, same place, different topics, always the same fun. But until then, I hope you have a great sports-filled weekend. And for our producer, Justin Stephenson, Stephen, I should say, and our director, Sandy Alderman, I'm Dario Melendez. Hope you have a great, great week, and we will see you next time right here on Big 12 Sports Saturday. Thanks for watching Big 12 Sports Saturday, presented by George Webb Restaurants. Our kitchen's always cooking. Street and what animal in the sheets? A cougar. Lord have mercy. Celebrity Family Feud, Sunday, July 10th on ABC and stream on Hulu. Ready, <laughs> set, pull. The final straw is a game of gravity versus greed. Let's go. This show's crazy, right? Let's go. The final
final straw premieres Sunday on ABC. Shootings in downtown Milwaukee after the Bucks Celtics game. Governor Evers permitted early release for violent criminals. The county on pace for 306 homicides this year. Evers' crime plan cut Wisconsin's prison population in half. The Milwaukee Police Department is now facing budget cuts. Evers made it easier to defund the police. Milwaukee is seeing a surge in violence unprecedented in the city's history. Call Governor Evers. Tell him to put our safety first. Hey, baseball fans. This season, turn the Weds double play meal deal. Seven cheeseburgers and two fries for only $15. Mm -mm. Sunday on Upfront. The parade attack in Highland Park, the potential for a second attack in our state capital. The new details unfolding, Madison's mayor joining us, and another debate about guns. Upfront.